Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a video that's kind of a walkthrough of an updated Ionic Framework uh, latest Vue 6 release with a few JS and uh, state management done with Pinya. I've done some videos on pretty much all the things I've covered. Uh, so this is this is the new project which is posted in GitHub. I was planning on doing a more thorough video but I posted a project on GitHub so people have found it already so I figured I might as well do a walkthrough. Um, the original one I did, let's see, it's about 16 months ago, um, covered a whole bunch of other topics. There's a video up on YouTube kind of walking through this one. Uh, this one covers the initial release of Ionic View. It has a login, log out, uh, file upload, capacitor camera integration, geolocation, a bunch of other interesting things in it. You can watch the video and look at the source code here. But the, like I said, this is the older one. This is the V6 upgrade. I'm going to try to integrate some more features that are found in V6. Um, but I also wanted to upgrade, um, add state management because I don't think I included state management in the original video. Please check them both out. I'll include links in the video below. Um, for this one, I'm just going to kind of walk through the features. I'm not going to type out a bunch of code, just kind of explain what's there because the source code is freely available at my GitHub repo. So basically what the application does, it has um, uh, logging with Firebase integrated. I have some records stored in there, so I'm kind of showing how you can get data out of um, Firebase, but keep track of it in your state manager. It's um, a tab, so it's authentication on, side of, on top of the tabs. And then there's the kind of logout functionality. Let's kind of zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about in regards to the state manager. So we go through our view tabs. I have integrated, let's see if I can go to the top, Pina, which is the state manager. And as I go through the code for the state manager, you'll see what I'm talking about in there. I have two modules in my state manager at the root. Um, but the two modules that I have is I have an authentication store, which keeps track of the user, it's the Firebase user information, and then also the profile information I have, I'm tracking. I have some getters on it to give me information about login and if there's errors. And then I have a separate um, store called image store, which just keeps track of the images that I've kind of loaded in from Firebase. So this is a pretty cool how you can get access to your information that's in your store through Pina. And so that's what's going on here. And now let's kind of walk through to set up some of the code. I'm also leave some comments for other things you guys might want to see in this application that you think would be helpful. But let's just kind of walk through what's going on. So I started with the basic uh, view tab template from Ionic and added the authentication on top of it. Um, but just to get to let you know some changes that need to be made. So to get Pina integrated, um, you need to go into your main TS. You import Pina, you create the store. I'll show you the store in a minute. You call create Pina to set it up. You need to add the use on the end. We get access to the store because what we're trying to do is, for those of you who aren't familiar with Firebase, there's the ability to listen uh, for auth state changes. And so at startup, what I'm doing is, I'll show you this method, but what this method does is it checks to see if there's um, a user because we want to check for a user before we actually try to render a route so that we know the appropriate route to render. So we render the login route if a user, uh, we render the login route if there's no user. We render, we render the home page if there is a user. So we're just trying to set up the store appropriately before we start rendering anything. So let's let's kind of hop to the store right now since we're spending a bunch of time talking about it. So here's kind of the index to the store. It shows how I kind of pull all the stores together for each module, the auth store and the image store. And then if we go to the actual file, so if we look at user, I'll just, I'll go in more detail about how Pinya works. And I have another video that covers that, which I'll include the link below also. But what we're doing here at the, at the top level really is that um, we set up an interface for what our user object looks like. We set up an interface for what our state is. So this kind of explains what our state looks like. And then we define our store. I really like Pena a lot. It's, to me, it's a lot clearer than um, Vuex. So it's it's pretty cool. We set up our getters for is logged in and for user error. 
And then we just have our action. So as I said, here's my action to check to see if I have a state. And I'll show you my Firebase library. I've kind of consolidated all my Firebase calls into a separate file. So here's here's the action that we have that we have. This checks this this initializes the listener that sits around and waits to see if there's a change in the auth state. If there is a change in the auth state, we get the profile information, and then we update our state here. So we save the profile information here. We save the user information there. Um, for those of you familiar with Firebase, like I said, this is just a thin wrapper around Firebase. And so what's happening here? I'll log in user. I'm calling my Firebase login, email, password updating state, updating errors. Down here at the logout, same thing called the Firebase logout function, update state, update errors. And then we have our create account function um, to create an account. Once again, update state, update errors. Let's hop over to our Firebase file. Like I said in here, all I've really done is create wrappers around existing Firebase calls, because you should see these, uh, create user with email and password, sign in with email and password, sign out, and then our on auth state listener. And then our first set profile information, we're kind of updating documents. This is also for those of you who haven't used the latest version of the Firebase. Um, libraries, you can see things are done quite a bit differently here. So for example, here, where am I? Um, on accessing collections and documents like this this document function is drastically different than the way you would do things before you know you have this get doc call just everything's a little bit different so um, i encourage you to check it out also in here i have the ability to kind of query objects specifically from collections and once again you can see this is different too you do a get docs then you do this kind of collection call to get the collection so this whole kind of get docs get doc um, get collection is drastically different than it was done before, but I encourage you to check it out. That's why I put all the source code up here so you can see how that's done here. Done here. The other interesting thing I do here is I actually am listening for changes. So that's how I can update this list as um, changes are made in the um, database in the back. In the next video, I'll cover kind of updating and deleting these images here, and I'll probably integrate the capacitor camera and kind of run this thing in a on a uh, mobile device so you can kind of see how all that works so this is a separate firebase library actually let me just kind of show you my project layout also kind of what i've done here is it's a basic you know default layout that you get when you start up your ionic application uh, some something that i've added new is i've created the store directory and inside the store directory i've also added my firebase library Everything starts with this kind of index, which is what's really exposed to the app. And that's how you get access um, with Pina to your two stores, the image store and the auth store. And then, as I said, my separate Firebase, my separate Firebase library that um, is a thin wrapper around uh, Firebase. I did it this way so I didn't have to include the Firebase specific code in my store. So if you wanted to use the framework that I've created here yourself, um, and use a different uh, persistence layer, you could just kind of rewrite the functions that I have in my Firebase TS and still use the original code that I have. So let's go back here. So I've covered everything inside of my store. Let's talk about how I handle the auth flow and what I've done inside a router, inside of this router index TS. Let's kind of spread this out. This is your normal index TS that you, that you get out of the box. I've added this new some two new routes here. I've added this login and the create account right here at the top. And as you can see, I've also added this before enter guard so that I can check all my routes before we enter them. I don't need to check um, my component. I mean, my create account, obviously, uh, but I down here, uh, I'm just realizing I'm missing no, here I'm checking before I go to the tabs because these are the private ones. And then I have my check here on my login so that I can redirect to the home page if necessary. If you end up on the login page, but you're authenticated already, we can redirect you to um, kind of the home page. And if you look at my guard here, what I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of my store. So I get access to my store. And uh, from my store, I can determine if the user's logged in or not. And if, if I have a store and the user is logged in, 
And if I'm trying to go to the login route, then I just redirect you to your tab one, which is the home page, which is what you see here. Um, otherwise, you just go to wherever you were going to go. Um, if you're not logged in and the two name is to log in, then we just pass through. Otherwise, if you're trying to go to another page, then I redirect you to the login page. So that's kind of what's going on in the store. And then last but not least, so I think I've covered, make sure I covered all the files here. So I've covered what's going on in my index. There's no, I'm not using that. I've got to delete it. I'll delete it from the project. Uh, we've, let's talk about how we're actually using the store inside of the files. So first we'll do the easy one, which is kind of the list. And so if I go to my tab page, which is the main list, you can see I, why do I have, I don't need the auth store anymore. See, I used to do my login and log out in this home page, so that's why I had the auth store, but I really just want the image store. And out of the image store, so what am I doing here? So the first thing I have this function, initialize collection listener. And so what this thing does is it listens for any changes in this uh, collection called image info. And if there's any changes, it updates the store with the changes. So basically it, it updates the, um, the result set that I get back. And, and so then all I need to do since I have access to my image store is up at top here, I can just, well, that's why I have auth store because I'm rendering kind of the email up at the top there. I can access my store right here with image in image store dot images. And that gives me the list of images that came back from the collection. Let's quickly go back to this initialized collection listener. So what this is initialized collection listener does, it uh, let's go to the face Firebase call underneath it. So what it's basically doing is I pass it in the name of a collection to listen to. And any time there's a change in the collection, it gets a snapshot of the changes. It, up, it um, creates this um, array of all the objects. And then it returns the objects to the caller. And the caller is back here in my store. And then what I do here is I update the state. And so this, this is how every time the collection changes, I update my state. And my state keeps track of all my images. So then when I go back to tab one, which is right, that's tab two, tab one, up here in my view, my image store will always have the latest data. Since the data in the store is reactive, anytime it changes, my list will update. And so this is how I keep an active update, an active updated list visible here. Um, and then the rest of this is just kind of normal, uh, view kind of v4 iterating through the images and so that's what we have here and the last page is just my settings page which is really just some place to put my logout button and display the profile information now let's look at that here page two so if we look at page two here in setup i get the authentication store which gives me the logout function the currently logged in user and the profile information for that user. Here's my do logout function so that when you click the button, I log you out and redirect you to the login page. And then up here is just, um, what do we got here? Yeah, I'm just rendering the information from the store. And so as you can see here in the store, I'm getting back my profile information. And so I'm rendering the first name and the last name from the profile. Am I rendering anything else? Yeah, I'm rendering the email address and the age. And then from the user object, I get the metadata, get the last sign in time. So, and the cool thing about it is all its information is stored is reactive. As I, as I showed you before, it's stored inside of Pina. And so anytime that thing updates, my UI automatically updates. And last but not least is the create account page. Pretty straightforward of view form to capture all the information that I need. And then I have, hold on. And then down here, I have um, same thing again. I get access to my store. My store has my create account function. I pass in the variables, I create account and then redirect appropriately. I'm just using refs to create instances that are attached to the V model here so I can get the updated in my UI, no validation. Maybe I should add some validation and stuff inside of there. I think it's like a real useful starter template.
And then finally, here's a login page. Similar to before, UI to keep track of everything. Also, I'm keeping track of errors that happen in the store so I can kind of update the UI if there's a problem. I get access to the all store, get access to the function, and then I call login. Um, that's pretty much what's going on here. Maybe in the next video, I'll do a kind of a type along when I kind of show you how to add the objects and remove the objects. Try to sprinkle in a little bit more of the new uh, components that were released in the Ionic uh, View, v, eh, in the Ionic View components version six, because this is kind of bare. There's not nothing new. So put some modals in there. Maybe try to figure out how to use the accordion. Maybe some date time stuff. Just you know to show the really the efficiency that you get from using Ionic and using Vue together along with Firebase. I hope this walkthrough of the project was helpful. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Please leave some feedback on other things that you'd like to see um, added to this project. And like I said, I'll keep put links in the video for Pina, for the um, for those who don't know how to set up Firebase, I'll put a link on how to set up Firebase. And I'll also include a link to the previous project and the previous video that is go along with the older version of this project. Uh, so um, take care, enjoy the holidays, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks. Bye.